Well, may the peace of Christ be with you. Uh, what a great joy and pleasure to to come your way again this day, Tuesday, the, the 12th of January. Um, still the first week of ordinary time. Uh, a continuation of our readings, especially that of uh, both readings, the first reading, uh, that is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, a continuation, uh, verse 5 to 12, then the gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verse 21 through to 28. Shall we begin this brief reflection with a word of prayer, as we always do? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father in heaven, to you belongs the glory, the honor, and the power. You've given us this gift and this opportunity to begin this day with you. We have your word that enlightens us on this path. We pray that as we submit ourselves to this word that enlightens every man and woman, you may guide us through the course of the stay and the efficacy and the power of this word may crush every obstacle that may rise against the projects you bid us initiate at the beginning of this year. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Shall we quickly look at the Gospel reading, Mark 1, 21 to 28. Jesus went into Capernaum, and at once on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teachings, because he taught them with authority, not like the scribes. At once, in their synagogue, there was a man with unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked it, saying, Be quiet, get out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions, and with a loud cry went out of him. All the people were so astonished, and they started asking one another, what it meant, saying, a new teaching with authority. He gives orders to the unclean spirits and they obey him. And his reputation at once spread everywhere through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The word of the Lord, praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark 1, 21 to 28. Shall we please quickly look at the first reading that is the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 5. To 12 Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 12. I quickly take the reading. I, I will underline some aspects so no, as not to prolong this reflection. He says, um, verse number 5, Hebrews 2 5. God did not submit the world to come, He did not submit the world to come, about which we are speaking to angels. Someone testified to this somewhere with the words. What is a human being that you spare the thought of him, or a son of man that you care for him? You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting all things under his feet. And for in, for in putting all things under him, he made no exceptions, leaving nothing that was not subjected. At present, it is true. We are not able to see that all things are under him, but we do see Jesus who was made little less than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he submitted to death so that by God's grace he might taste death on behalf of everyone. Then verse, towards the end, then verse 11 and 12, listen, he says, For consecrator and consecrated have all the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters in the test. I shall proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the full assembly. I shall praise you. So Jesus and us have the same flesh because he assumed our flesh. The word became man and dwelt among us. It's in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14. Interesting statements in both first reading and the, the, the gospel of today. So let's begin with the gospel. 
Yesterday, Jesus launches the kingdom of God. Repent and believe the good news because the kingdom of God is at hand. And I stress the, the power behind the word. So Jesus launches a kingdom. And in that kingdom, he moves about in Galilee. He goes to Galilee. He doesn't launch it in Jerusalem because there is already a temple in Jerusalem. But he moved to northwards. Northwards. He moved northwards. Galilee. Where people there were not so much respected because the southerners believed that the northerners were not, were not so much educated. So you remember the day of Pentecost when Peter the apostle spoke. The leaders in Jerusalem are, who are these guys? Uneducated men who want to preach to us. So Jesus begins his ministry there in the northern part of the country, Palestine, where the people were not respected because they were, they were not so much educated. Peter and Andrew, his brother, James and John brothers, this is where he launches the kingdom. He, he, he plants the seed in a place where people were not so much respected. The power of the kingdom. He inaugurates it in Galilee. Then he comes. He's still in that region, but today in Capernaum. He goes to the synagogue because Saturdays, that is the Sabbath, that was what they were accustomed to do. The synagogue was a place of meeting. It began when they were in captivity in Babylon. When there was no temple, they started meeting and sharing the word of God, the Torah and the prophets. So it continued into the New Testament. Indeed, Jesus, when he was alive, was frequenting the synagogue. So he goes there. But one thing you need to understand here, when you begin chapter 2, uh, chapter 121, listen to what Mark says. Um, <laughs> You shouldn't, you shouldn't miss this because it makes the reading very interesting. 121. They went to Capernaum and at once on the Sabbath, he went. There are two mentions of the Sabbath, but the second one, there's a qualification. It said, their synagogue. Sorry, two mentions of the synagogue. In chapter 1, verse 21, he says, Mark says, at once on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue. But at the second mention, second mention of the synagogue, verse 23, Mark says, at once in their synagogue. Why this distinction? I'm going to explain to you briefly, beloved. So Jesus is in Capernaum. It's a Sabbath. The day they, they gather to share the word of God and he appears. The word made flesh is here among you. And he speaks with authority because he's not going to quote Moses. He's not going to quote Isaiah because Isaiah and Moses waited for his day. They spoke about him. So he is here in their midst. So he was not going to quote anybody. He spoke with authority because he is a word made flesh that illumines every man and woman. Beloved, now in the synagogue, there was another man. So in the synagogue, there are two men, Jesus, God, man, and a man who is not a man, but being possessed by unclean spirit. Note this, in the synagogue, there are two men, Jesus, the God man, and let me describe the other man, the God, no, the man on clean spirit. So Jesus is the God man and the man on clean spirit because hidden under the man is the unclean spirit. Then hidden under Jesus is his divinity. Indeed, in Mark, he didn't want the spirit to reveal it because it is called the messianic, messianic secrecy. Jesus shouted that the demons don't reveal my identity now. So he stood in their presence as a man, but a man with divinity, God. The man stood before Jesus as a man, but hidden was the evil spirit. Before Jesus the place where they gathered to share the word has been taken over by evil spirits. So the evil spirit is asking Jesus, what do you want here? We have taken over the synagogue. What do you want here? The true power, the true word manifests himself in the synagogue and the spirit has to move because the word has made entrance. God has entered his place. The word that sanctifies, the word that illumines, the word that strengthens has entered the synagogue. And the evil spirit began to shiver. What do you want with us, Holy One of God? Jesus shouted at him. Then it left. 
your synagogue, a place where you have to share the word, has been taken over, been possessed by an evil spirit. And your scribes couldn't know that this man was possessed. So the Son of God, the Word made flesh, identified that evil spirit and pulled it out. You could be in synagogues, temples, churches, preaching. And these places would have been taken over by these evil elements. So the power of Christ, the power of his word, Iman is manifest. These elements will continue to dominate until the power of Christ manifests. Our synagogues, our temples, our churches, our chapels should be places of God, of Christ, where he manifests his power. Then, beloved, the first reading says, God has placed everything under the feet of Jesus. Stands visible and invisible as we profess in the creed. So today, the invisible spirits who have been placed under the feet of Jesus are Christ. They are thrown away because the God-man Jesus manifests himself in Galilee. The second ten, or even the third I want to draw attention to is that you remember at the beginning, right after this year towards right after christmas i was i've been asking you to begin this year with a project it tells you that any project you want to initiate there may be obstacles these obstacles represented seen in these evil spirits that were in the synagogue a place where we need to hear god's word but these evil spirits manifest don't be protected don't be worried when these evil spirits manifest they will rise against you because they know that the project, when it succeeds, will torment them. We read the first letter of John chapter 3, verse 8. St. John writes, The reason why the Son of God was manifested was to destroy the works of evil. We pray that today, Tuesday, as you go about your duties, whatever dreams you have, whatever aspirations, keep them right, keep writing them down each day. Today, Tuesday, write them down again. Look at them. Pray over them at Mass. Pray over them during your personal prayers. Present them to the Lord. Tomorrow, Wednesday, the same thing. Those projects, let these elements rise against you. But seek the power of Christ to tame them. I pray that the power of His Word that you embrace each morning before you step out will conquer and scratch Pull, drive these evil elements away from you. May the Lord's favor surround you. May the Lord's favor envelop you as you begin this day, Tuesday, the 12th of January. There is power in God's word. Embrace Christ each morning before you set out. And even as you come in, bring him back into your home. The peace of the Lord be with you all, dearly beloved. Amen. Stay blessed.